Welcome to the ESL Pro League. Another day, in fact, match day 21 about to go down. It's Super Sunday, six maps to be played here, and I'm not alone. I am Alex Machine Richardson, and I'm joined by Yanko YNK Paunovic and Chad Burchill. Hey, Spun J, how you doing today? Oh, I'm a poet, and I didn't know it. I don't like that meme. You're not a fan? Nah. No? You need to deal with it, bro. I brought Me it on Memes myself. are going to be around that you're not going to like. Well, when you have the meme load at your table, the meme that's machine. Hard to deal. Where's he? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm all about serious analysis and desk hosting. That's and my, puns. And yeah, I do like a good pun. And a poetry, apparently, because I just rhymed at the start of today. It has been a fantastic few days. We I feel like we haven't stopped, really. We've been at this desk an awful lot, and there's been a lot of CS played, and that's no exception today. But before we talk about what's coming up today, we do like to start with a little recap of what you may have missed. This was just yesterday. We got to see a whole lot of, I was going to say, good CS, but actually, you know what? It was a pinch of salt. We didn't get to see Envy on Cobble. Unfortunately, due to various technical difficulties, they could not show up on time, and thus the default was given to the polls. Following that, we did get to see them on Mirage, however, unable to kind of bypass that 10 round marker and we did see that go the way of Virtus Pro. Now Penta Hellraisers was an intriguing series. We saw Penta pick up the cash and Cobble go the way of Hellraisers rather convincingly. In fact so much so that actually Chad you had quite a few positive words for Hellraisers and their structure over on Cobblestone. We'll talk about that in just a moment because now this is what it left us with. Closing in now towards the end of the season the things start getting very dicey. The top six is where they're battling for and you can see already some teams may very well be locked out in the cold. Hellraiser's heroic Penta flipside, all almost without reach. The nine loss margin is basically where we do draw the line, and so Astralis and Virtus Pro are on the ropes as well. G2 are long gone. But already we are starting to see the lay of the land. Navi looking very comfortable, 11 to 3. NIP top of the table as well, 13 to 5. And the boys that started so strong, 11 to 7 now. FaZe have been conceding a fair few losses back to back. You'll be seeing FaZe today. That's where our conversation will start. Because today you get six matches. I actually do get to see six matches as opposed to yesterday where we were unable to get NIP in their gaming chairs. But today you get a full six map extravaganza. It starts with Hellraiser's flip side. And this is where I throw it to you, Chad, and just say that you actually, despite being, yes, critical of Hellraiser's, you found some kind of shines of light on Cobblestone. Just thought they had a unique CT style on okay. Cobble. You know, they're playing more of a retake style and be letting them have have that platform area. Yeah, refreshing, good to see different mm. styles of Counter-Strike coming through. However, that is not what we'll be seeing. We get to see Nuke a crop up again. Flipside and Hellraiser's on Nuke, Yanko. That's going to be an intriguing one. Definitely so, but Flipsides have shown that they are ready to play Nuke, that they've practiced it, and the only win they've got has been on Nuke, so maybe now they can repeat that. We certainly hope so. Fnatic Navi, our next game as well. That'll be brought to you by the two Australian casters, and they'll be guiding you through what should be actually a spectacular adventure. Train and Dust too. We get to see both Dust and, I mean, Train, we saw Navi just very recently here in the Pro League, so we'll get to see them go ahead and flex their muscles versus the Swedish roster that has, well, I mean, probably come up better recently, you would argue, after that godsend Fnatic mashup. Dignitas phase as well, come rounding up the day with Cash and Overpass. Yanko. Yes. Fnatic, Godsent. We talked about Godsent yesterday. You can't help but feel Fnatic are kind of looking a little bit more stable. Thing is, Fnatic are looking less. If mm. anything else, not stable, but we just haven't seen them enough. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We don't, we don't see really, much of them. Yeah, we don't really know how they're looking. The problem with Godsent is they've played in uh, a lot of online uh, qualifiers. They've uh, played in Star Ladder as well. Basically, underperformed in in all t all uh, competitions we've seen them, right? So with Fnatic, yes, they have been looking better than that, but does, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're looking solid. They also dropped a map in Pro League to Hellraisers early on, had a couple of close games, six, lo six losses in 14 games. That's not you know, brilliance by any, by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, and of course we'll be talking about that later when the games do come through. But just a final point, kind of just to put a pin in it, Chad. Were you expecting one of these teams to kind of look a lot better, a lot quicker, or was this actually kind of what you expected? It's a long process to kind of rebuild. I think everybody thought Godsent would be the team, you know, who would be doing better to begin with. Yeah. There are less experienced players in Fnatic. Olaf and Dennis kind of got thrown in with, uh, obviously Twist is a good player, but Lecker and Wenton, they're not of the same caliber yet. I think just to touch on what Yanko's saying, mm -hmm. we have seen less of them, and it Maybe it's a good thing, you know, they're getting a chance to practice properly. Their only focus at the moment is the Pro League. They're putting 110% in that and they're prepping for their events down the line. The only positive thing I can take out of take for Godsend is they have the major spot for next year. So, you know, they're laughing about that. They they have between now and, and then to fix 
their yeah. issues. And we, and we know how stacked that major qualifier is going to be. Th that's true, though, but I don't think that the players in Godsend are the type of players who are just satisfied with, you know, having the major spot. Or, okay, if everything is going wrong, if we fix it until the major, then we're good. I, th those are the types of players that are hungry to win all the time. They're hungry yeah. for championships more than anything else. So I think they're really dissatis dissatisfied, obviously, but they would want... Uh, I, I'm sure that they're going to try and get to that high level even before the major to compete in other tournaments. Now, our first game of the day is actually very interesting for a few, um, um, for a multitude of reasons. One being that Flipside need both of these wins. They're running out of games to play now. So they're 1 and 11 in the standings. You do play 26 games, so there's plenty to play from. But now or never, really, for Flipside. This is a win versus Hellraiser. Let's not forget, Hellraiser's are sitting at Amiga 11th on the standings. This is, these are one of those wins that they should be able to, you know, put up a fighting chance. And the rosters are on your screen. Blade, Markalov, M Waylander, and World Edit. You will not be seeing Shara. Of course, that has not been updated. There was a recent change, and we have already seen what the boys from Flipside have uh, managed to do with their new tool, Mr. Electronic coming in and uh, hopefully, I mean, I mean, hopefully continuing where he left off because we saw him on overpass and he seemed to be a little bit of a shining light in an otherwise dark world of Flipside. Definitely shown a, c a couple of good rounds, but it's obvious that he, just him coming into the team, it's not going to no. fix their problems uh, by any means. So the flip side looking like a team in disarray right now and that they will need time to rebuild and recover. Mm. Now, when I mentioned Flipside yet, last time we were having this kind of little run with Flipside Penta and we were like quickly running off at all the things we talk about. And when I mentioned World Edit Yanko, you pulled a funny face and said, no, don't make me talk about him. You need to explain and elaborate as to why. It's been a while since we touched on the editor of Worlds. Because, like, I mean, this is kind of my subjective opinion. I generally dislike offers that are flashy at times, but really inconsistent, or that will have a round where he will get four kills, win you the round by himself with some aggressive peaks, but then when he just holds an angle and the easy shot comes in and he and his team put him in a position to, to get that mm. uh, early uh, advantage for them, and he just misses that shot and dies, and then becomes a liability for the team. That's something I, I dislike in general. So I think World Edit is probably the you know, b greatest example of that uh, kind of a, a player. Earlier we had some similar players like maybe Shazam. But, you know, I don't think that's what a team needs from their opera. And uh, Blade himself in an interview said that he thinks that the opera is the most important player in any team, pretty much. So I think that's maybe one of the reasons why Flipside hasn't been able to consistently break into the top 10 or top 8, besides the, the, the legend status they acquired at the la last Let, major. Let's run with that thread then. Blade says the orpa is the most important role in any team. However, we have some teams currently who don't have a dedicated orpa, who don't even necessarily run it for the majority of the time. Chad, where do you stand on this debate? Because it's evident that some teams don't believe that what Blade's uh, preaching. Well, if you build your team around the AWP and he can't hit shots consistently, like Yanko touched on, he's mm -hmm. not hitting the sitters that he has to sit, uh, hit, then that's a problem, right? Then that's when I think you shouldn't be building your team around an AWP. But you can. You can, definitely, if you have someone that can do what you need them to do on a consistent basis. Otherwise, the whole team suffers, you know, to get the AWP for him, people are dropping it, you know, it's a very expensive weapon, you're only getting the $100 kill reward for it. Uh, maybe the system that Blade wants to run with World Edit doesn't work because of how, of how inconsistent he is. Um, I just think, though, like you're saying, that you don't necessarily need to have an AWPer. If you don't have a player that is consistent, then move away from it. Do something like uh, VP does, where one of three players can AWP at any given time and use it when it's necessary, not try and force it down the throat of the team and make it harder for them. Yeah, and it certainly could be difficult as well for both sides. Interestingly enough, when Flipside met Hellraisers three times, it's, it's been a win for Flipside every single time. Of course, most recently at the major qualifier uh, that was played out on Overpass. That's not the map we'll be seeing just yet. And so, gentlemen, I do want to kind of start navigating towards your expectations for this one and predictions. For the first map, though, what are we thinking for Cash? Hellraisers did look good on cash yesterday. We have to remember they lost it because they threw away a 5v1 Jesus. and a 4v1. Yeah, and besides forget. that, on T side, it looked pretty solid. So considering that Flipside is, has been really shaky lately, I, I'm going uh, with Hellraisers on map one. I heard SH and I was like, where is he taking this? <laughs> Hellraisers have been shaky recently. Excuse me, Flipside. What have you got for me, Chad? Yeah, they've been absolutely shocking. No, you guys. Um, <laughs> but Flipside, this map for them, this is the only map in the last three months. Obviously, this is when they had Shara that yeah. they have a greater than 50% win ratio on. All their other maps is like they hardly win on. So we can see by their results here that they're not winning a lot of Counter-Strike, but this is their best map and they'd consider their best map. I think it'd be a good clash, but I think Hellraisers, you know, they 
I think they've just got more firepower. Mm. Sounds like the Destinx Hellraisers could get their first win versus Flipside right here, right now in the ESL Pro League. And let's go ahead and introduce your casters now, a chivalrous pair of Henry G and Sadakist. How you doing? Very well. How are you? Cool. Ah, good. Let's, uh, let's talk about video games. That's what we have to do. Well, Flipside versus Hellraisers. Two of the teams are aren't going to make the land, but they're going to try Definitely fighting not. to get away from the regulation spot. Hellraiser's looking it's like true. they're getting better. You know, they're going to bring in uh, Dead Fox, trying to bring their way up the ranks a little bit. But uh, where do you think this one's going? going to be kicking things off with cash. I picked Hellraiser's yesterday for absolutely no reason, and they won, so I'm going to pick Hellraiser's again. That works. Yeah, we it can does. With that. I, think it's, I think it's fine. Uh, I, I do agree with a lot of the sentiment talked about about World Edit, though, and, and I think we brought that up enough times now that the inconsistency of his AWP play seems to be to the detriment of his team at multiple times. We're going on to a map where an AWP is extremely uh, important, I think, and, and specifically the CT side. We know that Liquid chose to run it without an AWP player at all for a lot of period of time when they had a Dren uh, on the T side, but on the CT side, yeah, I mean, World Edit's going to have to be a, a factor in this game. Yeah, for me, Cash, it's one of the most important roles on the map, especially when you have the options to uh, go very aggressive and be passive. You can play no one towards middle if your AWP is confident. You can hold it towards highway. It's certainly that's certainly something that has to be actually coming in very strong for your team to actually work out. But we'll see whether Flipside can bounce back. They've had a, a pretty questionable few weeks here. They went to obviously a few events we were at and never really got going. A couple of map wins here and there, but never got that deep in the tournament. But, uh, oh, Hellraisers versus Flipside. Two teams with similar regions. And yeah, 1-11 and 11 for Flipside right now as well. What was the first shocking. map they won? Who did they get I against? I couldn't tell you. I don't... I'm in one Penta, era or the other. Maybe? It was Penta. It's Pretty possible. Sure. I think it was 1-1 one, one. overall. Yeah, I don't remember. I think we've casted, what, 2,000 maps this year? <laughs> 2,000 maps? Yeah, 2,000 maps this year. That's what I'm going with. Wow. Definitely not, but <laughs> gonna, gonna, go, <laughs> gonna go with it anyway. Yeah, that'd be pretty impressive to do that, but it looks like we are into the pistol round. Uh, the knife round presumably already happened before I get too excited. Has this happened? It has. It is going to be the pistol. It's going to be Hellraiser selling the T-side here of cash in our first best of one here. Hellraiser is going to be buying four sets of armor, a smoke, two flashbangs. We'll have a look at the CT buy as well. Similar sort of equation, but three sets of armor, one smoke, and a diffuse kit in the hands of Blade as well. We'll see whether any CTs are posting any aggression to start around. Looks like a pretty standard default for now. 2-1-2, two, two, and a little boost going in towards the T's. That normally means you leave one player boosted towards the end. He's not going to show his hand right until the execute comes in. As you can see, Dead Fox and Bondex setting themselves up towards A, and that's going to mean Sticko, who's boosted right now, he'll come in towards the end. But it's nice smoke towards Connector means they will go for some mid-aggression to kick things off, actually. We're excited to see Electronic for the first time on Q in person because I know Andrews was excited watching a score bot one day, not even him play, about his incredible tallies he put up in the first minor qualifier for the CIS region. Regardless, it's going to be him that starts off with two in this game. Two pistol, pistol kills, excuse me, one inside of middle, pops down back vents and gets someone else in the B side as well as Blade's going to rotate over in behind the truck. Stickos in front of him, but behind the forklift, and as such, just 16 HP to work with. That'll allow World Edit to try and walk up toward Highway a little bit more aggressively because they won't be able to peek him, but it's Dead Fox that'll line it up. So the battle of the new boys so far, and in fact, head-to-head -head right now as they do exchange and blows toward one another. It's Electronic looking worse for wear, but Dead Fox gets back around the red crate. He's going to pursue him, get the first kill onto Electronic, and now he can turn back, find another on top of the box. He's up to three kills in the round. It's just Markalov that remains on five HP, no kit. Wow. And the round over is Dead Fox will close it out. But but the CTs were to have a nice little retake there. It was a four on two at one point as well, but Dead Fox, like you said, the new pickup of the team, he gets four frags there on the retake, finding the P2000 and just mowing them down one by one. It's a nice little one by let's and he stayed calm. Didn't give too much away, just listening out for the footsteps around him and nailed it. So a plan coming in for Hellraiser and a successful round overall. And flip side, an interesting force buy from them. You can see Electronic coming in with the Nova. Not one of the most commonly used shotguns, but it's going to be four deagles surrounding him as well with his teammates. A smoke towards the B storage area and World Edit trying to find that first Desert Eagle headshot. He's going to have an opportunity to land one. We're not pulling the trigger just yet as Angel makes his way towards the vents. Nades towards the connector means Blade will be coming in towards highway as well, trying to find that worst one bullet headshot. Just can't find it just yet. Angel yet to take any damage. And the CT is going down to about 40 HP each. World Edit with the deagle in toward mid. And 45, he's going to try and find another shot. Does spot a shoulder toward that vent position, but smoked off Angel can now elect to try and push down mid a little bit further. He's just holding the wide side of that smoke to make sure he's not counter-peaked. And 
they can put some more pressure onto A rather than just the vents from mid. Angel's gonna wrap ground check bottom of highway and he'll hold for rotations. There's one at Squeaky, two inside A main, and, and one watching anyone pushing through B as well. Yeah, at this point, Hellraise is just running the full default, waiting for a mistake to be made. They know the CTs are going to be on this fourth by the second round, so the Desert Eagles, as long as they stick together and make sure they're refragging here, should be fine. Angel should be going down. There it is. The first headshot does arrive. It will be going in Flipside's favor, and a second as well. So what looked like a very easy round for Hellraisers at this point is starting to slip away. Still a possibility, considering the no rifles have been picked up by the CTs for 30 seconds. This pretty much decides this will be the final move now for Bondic and Co. As they're going back towards mid, 25 seconds now. What's the play? And zero towards B storage. I guess it will be a B split of some sort as Markov is towards the checkers room. I think he's been spotted, so he should be taken down here. Yeah. Does manage to get a kill. That probably much secures the round as well. As they only have 10 seconds remaining. Electronics just waiting for them on the side. Well, that it now is going to get Molotov out of position, but Electronic has the shotgun, low HP on zero, a second tag. Oh, and they don't follow it up. He's going to take it away. It's so simple, Bondic, because he walks in, gets dropped. It's 1-1. They call right back into it, and Electronic, a protagonist once more. Yeah, Electronic seems to be a decent little pickup for Flipside. Not a player I've ever casted before, but in the last few he days. He dropped, I think, 45 frags regulation uh, versus... Oh, Empire? No, he was playing with Empire. I can't remember way back like february this year yeah it's a player i've never casted before but seeing him have a couple of performances in pro league so far it's been pretty interesting and how raises a force by of their own is going to run number three it's flipped as a bounce back with those first two deagle kills towards b store in the middle and how is running out of time forcing their way to the b side that's where the shotgun was waiting for them this round they come in with the tech nines the desert eagles and they're trying to work that first pick but for now with no smokes available it's going to be a very Difficult ride for them as they boost up Dead Fox. Dead Fox. Just going to try and probe out a position toward the middle as well, but right now Bomb's going to rotate back over toward B. Two players in toward Checker as they've boosted Markalov for a little bit additional mid control with the FAMAS. They float in fast enough and swarm electronic with the AK. It could be problematic, as with those two down, it's rotation game, Bomb gets planted, two guns to potentially grab, but they do have the crossfire set. Markov's going to make that contact in toward mid, now knows they're there. Flash comes through from the white box, that's going to allow him to re-peek out, and he gets both successfully, but Electronic does go down, so they will give up the B site. This is the plant, the difference is in this case, no guns grabbed as no one went down near the site. Yeah, very low HP for Hellraisers as well, as they do get the bomb plant down, but at this point, Flipside just wait for the teammates to get in position. One towards B storage, two in heaven for now, and they're just going in with his UMPs. Waylander leading the charge here. Finds the first two kills and gets the third as well, so well played from Flipside. The bomb goes down for Hellraisers. It does mean a fully kill for them next round, but they will have guns on the following, so they could force by in the next round if they really wanted to, but considering there are only four players, uh, sorry, only one player went down and four survived, it doesn't really make sense. It's not like you've got Flipside on the ropes in terms of uh, economic standing. As we can see, this is the little beast bit coming in. Markolov fending them off there with the Famous. Nice double kill from him. So, yeah, just a few upgraded pistols here. They will be fine for money going in to round number five. But Flipside should get the 3 1 here, unless something goes horribly off course and somehow the Deagle Tech 9 and PT 50 combo with no armor manages to shut them down. Looks like a heavy A attack here. They can get another plan down. It'd be absolutely fantastic, but pretty unlikely. Angel's got the smoke and presumably he'll be using that towards highway. Flash into the side and just hope for the best at that point. Angel. Smoked in toward the door. Blades got the elevation though. He's spotted over toward Squeaky, he's able to take down two. It's going to be Waylander with one additionally on top of it, but Bomb still grabbed, fire gone. Would have been a, not much more than a tick on seven HP, so they will wait in time Ooh. to get the Bomb down. This gives them better chances as it pulls it back to a two versus two, a three versus two, with low HP on Angel having planted the Bomb. Could have been a problem, and now he's going to get a position to probe exactly where Electronic is early on. Markolov, however, has taken stick. Oh, still the one-on-one. -on -one. And still 7 HP, Markolov on 100. And he has a kit this time to play out a one on one. And Angel, he's getting closer to peeking it, but Markolov's going to take it directly to him. Yeah, doing a lot of damage there, Hellraisers. Considering they only had a Deagle, a P Tech 9, and a few PT 50s, no armor, they managed to get four kills, a bomb plant down as well. And there's still a chance to win that one versus one. This came down to the timing. Obviously, 7 HP versus 100. It was heavily stacked in Markolov's favor, but still. Now Razors do manage to take four weapons away. But here we go, then the first real gun round. Dead Fox, of course, the new boy for the team, is going to be picking up the AWP, taking the rather big shoes of Oscar there. 
People are speculating whether Hellraiser could ever recover from such a huge loss to the team. But Deadbox, I think, has actually been pretty Im impressive pickup overall. I see him having a very bright future going forward. But round number five, it will be World Edit, uh, the player we discussed before in the analyst section. We'll see whether he can step up here as we go into this first round. A pretty standard default for now. We have got a boost towards the middle, though. Angels made it down. And again, for the mid-control, the CTs are going to allow them to have it. You can see them actually adjusting towards highway blade. We'll be facing him using the HEs as well, just to hold them off to a bit of damage. Doesn't land any just yet, but he's been smoked out as the terrorists have full control of mid. So they can actually walk all the way up towards highway, which they have towards the ticket booth as well. So whatever it has to adjust his position, the refrag should come in. The sticker does take him down. And there you go, though. It's only a one and done. And yeah. the AWP player lost again. Angel's able to wrap the site. And World Edit gets himself in a horrible position to really do any effect once they execute from him. And Electronic, he's going to work up highway right now. See towards stick over to smoke out in front. He still manages to catch off through it. Well, it's off toward the site as well. Why not? Good measure. It's Bondic now has to hold cross from the top of the catwalk. No vision for his way. Does see them late, though, as they do jump up, and he's able to relay the information in time to Dead Fox, who's therefore able to take the to kill and take the round, Henry. Yeah, considering the previous round, they got four kills as well. It's actually very beneficial. You can see how detrimental that's been for flip side after losing that one. They're actually onto a full EK here. Markolov does have $8,600. He can probably drop a few pistols, uh, but still, nice round there from Hellraiser. Actually getting that mid-control nice and early established. There was no CT presence there, pushing them back to the site. They use that smoke at the top of highway as well, just to block the CT vision, allow them to get towards the ticket booth there, and players waiting towards the squeaky door, actually baiting out the shot from World Edit. The first kill's fine as long as they get the refrag there. It's perfect. And then they explode from highway and all the players have got their focus towards that squeaky door room. But speaking of attention, it's going to be Markolov pushing the mid-storage area. Takes down zero and manages to get away with life as well. They won't be able to recover that weapon, but still, it's a start. He's managing to get $900 for that first kill as well. And it looks like he's funneled them back towards the A-siders. All right, let's get ready to make their last move. Angel's going to go in as well. Aggressive immediately by the smoke that's covering off the back of Fork. But Markolov, as we saw it, they don't know yet, is still waiting in that wing. He's been found by Dead Fox, though, immediately on entry with the AWP. And the two kills ensuing in behind the site is going to allow yet another bomb plant. There's Electronic and Blade. They've got to be the one to rotate over. Flash in, Blade delayed. And unfortunately, which is pistols, it's a tall order to try and really make anything of this as Dead Fox just continues to go on a rampage. He's now up. Well, it's only seven kills, but the impact, more so after the pistol, has been strong as Bondic will close it out. At least some two kills, some economic damage done, but really in the end, it's now Hellraiser's on two in a row, having got the guns back out and looking fairly sharp. What's the play here from Flipside? They have got AK on Markolov and the rest of his teammates on about... $3.8 thousand dollars. They will be going for the force buy here. I guess it's not really a force buy. They got an orb and it's just three pharmacies. They wanted to have more utility instead of just the M4s and natural body armor to stop that aim punch being a huge factor here. So let's see what the players do. They go a little bit more aggressive, try and find that first pick with the AWP. It's actually going to be World Edit who's towards middle, not actually facing towards the boost spot at all. So just looking to see if anyone will walk into his crosshair. Decided not to smoke mid at the start. So that is a bit of a problem. It means you have to have two players watching towards mid and towards the boost as well. And I think they're going to give up middle once more. Will this be to their downfall once again? And to Waylander as well is going to get closer onto this main door. That's going to pull World Let It Over. But he's vulnerable to Squeaky. Nade comes through, flash open. Squeaky's been open, bonding. Oh he's got Waylander, and World Edit again is in a world of trouble. He's got one shot, somehow stays alive longer than he potentially should have. But again, this hesitation almost yeah. in their aggression with the AWP is going to cost them as Hellraisers go in. Another bomb plant going in beside the break crate. And Markolov starts to rotate away from mid, but what more can you really ask for? Four versus two again. Yeah. And a smoked off position, one waiting in mid, even when they try and just get away with their guns. That's such a high risk play, having your AWP go in for that aggressive flash pick as well. If there's more than one there, it's very unlikely you're going to get away with your life. You get that one shot off and then teammates were there to take you down. You can see how flashed he got. I'm pretty sure that's from an opposition flash bang, but still, uh, it's certainly better to have a rifle. We can get in the nice and quick and have the option to spray down two if, and if he has the opportunity to. Markov doing some work here, so it was electronics. So considering they've lost the round, they are finding the exit frags here. At this point, Harrods is they're happy to hunt considering they know they're going to break the economy fully. Other CTs they win the round. Looks like the CTs will be surviving though. An AK and an M4 saved. They managed to get a couple of incendiaries as well, so that certainly helps go forward. And we'll have a look whether they can actually reinvest around this. So this is the shot from Wadeda. He got flashed by a terrorist, so he still jumps in, which I found really strange. Fully blind, and then he's just definitely dead at that point. He knows terrorists are waiting for him on the other side, but he's blind. Surely just press the back key, don't have to fully commit. 
but he, he wanted it. He wanted to be part of the action. And they have forced around this one. Interesting decision. I guess they did save two weapons. And World Edit has been given an AWP. So a 5-7 for Waylander. Blades on the Famous still lacking pretty much everything in terms of grenades. That's World Edit. He's towards A this time. Well, he's got a more of a passive approach this time, which I can at least applaud in some senses, having watched those previous two interactions go down. Yeah. It definitely not successful for him so far. Dead Fox, like you said, though, having a good game. Help build his confidence up. We'll see what he's up to. He's actually just holding towards A storage for now. No one really giving too much away at this stage, but there it is. Sticko does get the first frag. That was towards mid. Just facing through the smoke, I believe, and actually managed to find a low HP player. And now it's on the back foot once again for flip side. What's the reaction here? Blade by himself towards middle, just with the Famous in hand. As it looks like Hellraisers will be boosting over once again. How does he even challenge this? He has under 41 HP. does do decent damage to stick up. He's surely going to be taken down at this point. There it is. Angel gets the call from his teammates, and that's another easy frag. Five on three now. What are they? This is where we need him to step up. He's got the orb towards highway. This is perfect for him. And there we go. He starts landing some shots now as he finds a kill on towards Angel. Well, now he's going to keep himself alive longer than the one kill, which is something to work forward with. Back off a little bit. Catch one more in the open as they get caught. No smoke on top of a main that's gonna drop bomb temporarily and they'll retrieve it just barely. Dead Fox tried to go for it safely. He's successful. No repeek in from World Edit in that time, but now they rotate back to B. Thankfully, Zero's already here to push through the site, find out exactly what's going on, attain the information, and then he's not 100% clued it with 22 HP, but then potentially push through. He's a little bit late to do that now. Flash comes in. That's gonna catch two. Markolov wants to go fast. Oh, that could be perfect. Immediate Molotov to deny the default position, but it's not gonna reach. Dead Fox no. in by the box, so he'll just get the plant down with seven seconds remaining. The idea was correct. You have to admire it nonetheless, but Dead Fox now has the upper hand with the AWP as Markolov still waiting to try and push out Heaven, his teammate. World Edit just getting in position toward the tree. And finally, around we said where you can stay alive and get two kills. It's still not going to be around that they can potentially convert into a win as Dead Fox is going to cover off Markalov and Bondic will immediately get World Edit at tree. Yeah, you can see after losing those first two frags there, just up against it. Someone had to step up. World Edit does find those two frags in return, but at that point, everyone had fallen around him. He was committed to the A sites and how ready to use that information with one player just walking to the B site, giving that call to his teammates, okay, you can come here safely. And like I said, there's 10 seconds remaining. That model or incendiary, I should say, could have been perfect. It just had to be one step closer to the box, the default area. But well read by Hellraiser, they get the safe plant down, and the two frags are pretty simple after that point. Third side just had no utility left to work. It's going to be 5 3 here. And we have another eco as Waylander goes aggressive towards Squeaky Door. Fires off some Deagle shots, but he's just taking so much damage in return. Blade is taking a little bit of it as well. He goes on the 21 HP. Well, then trying to go aggressive to it again. Once all day main, just fall back. You've got the kill. There it is. It's fine. This teammate will fall in return. World Edit, P250, there's a smoke down. He's gonna rotate back round, then they're gonna go for a boost instead to try and give him some vision, some information toward aim with these smokes out. Instead, he's gonna drop back down, try and spot toward Squeaky, and with the fire now gone, the flames extinguished, he'll get in behind the forklift once more. This P250, it's a desperate position. Hellraiser's just absolutely taking it to them in every position right now, as once more Bondic will walk out the door. And a quick and easy like kill down onto Electronic. Markalov left. Doing what he can on the bomb site here, but surely dead now. There it is. Sticker finishes things off. So, uh, will be maximum loss bonus now for the CTs. They can go for a double orb setup if they wanted to. Uh, it's not something I'd say would be. Oh, okay. Well, it does come out. I was going to say, I haven't seen uh, Flipside running it too often, but uh, Markalov coming in with a secondary one does make sense. Uh, former world class opera, of course. So, well done to Markalov. This is normally the, the strongest setup you can have on cash. Having one player towards B, being able to hold it by himself, fall back, get any information, go for that first shot. Once you get him set up, you can leave him by himself. But what are they back towards the middle this time? Not going to be over committing to the faces, waiting for people to walk through the smoke. Potentially with a flashbang as well. Markov, this is quite aggressive from him. By himself, like I said, takes a nade to the face and misses the first shot as well. Zero. That's a little bit too easy for him. Markov needs to be hitting those ones, I'm afraid. Gifted an opportunity and doesn't pull the trigger at the correct time. Don't take nades to the face, they're not recommended. Indeed. No one's done that yet. Either. You know the show, Can You Blend It? Yep. Or Will It Blend? No one's blended a grenade, grenade yet. <laughs> I think for obvious reasons. Well, I'm just saying, if they really want to up the ante, <laughs> I think that's what they need to if blend. If this blender really is as good as they say it is, yeah, blend me a grenade. Can we get some mods up in chat? My God. Oh, what's going on? It's just abysmal. Either way. 
Blade, he's gonna be in behind the forklift. Smoke's gonna land in front of him. He'll rotate back around. Again, they're gonna go back to this position late, having just tried to bait out a little bit of utility. Gap there it is. just barely enough for World that He does find Dead Fox takes him down, and now they've got, okay, something to work with. Blade pulling back on Bondic. No grenades for the CT at this point. We see Hellraisers still have a smoke and a Molotov. That's in the hands of Sticker for now. They'll be boosting towards middle, an area where they've had complete control over throughout this first half, and it's gonna be Electronic by himself. Hoping to take down Angel here. This frag pretty much decides around, in my opinion, who gets it. Oh, it's a sloppy exchange, and Electronic just about gets the frag there. Should be enough to win the round at this point. And it's going to be Sticko that gets Blade immediately back, though. It's going to leave him in a one versus two. Finds Electronic retreating. Oh, he was low dear. on HP. Trying, I think he was trying to go down the ladder silently, was he not? I've, I'm not sure what he was trying to do. I think you just want to stay alive at that point. You know, HP, you need just, your teammate to come and just hide behind the ticket booth, but trying to end things quickly, perhaps, is. We have got Wild at it, switching to the AK-47 against Sticko, who's looking sharp. And that's going to be Sticko. No, nope, not enough. World at it finally able to pull around the back with the kid as well. Quick defuse will come in and finally flip side will silence this five round run from Hellraisers. And in doing so, we do obviously reset the money, unfortunately. So they're going to be in a bit of a troublesome position. Yes. But at the same time, What's the silver lining here? No, there is none, really. They only have one <laughs> player stay alive, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's the real problem for them. Yes, they win the round, but you're absolutely right. They lose the, uh, the lost bonus they've built up, so they go into this round with three players struggling. So the AK-47 has to be dropped, and they get two Famuses out, two M4s. No orb, they were with the double orb set up before, which is where they found the first round, but let's see if they can do anything with this. Hellraiser can be more aware of the situation, and using Dead Fox is his best ability, I'm sure. He'll just be holding towards A main for that aggressive start. Flash is coming in, but that's going to be from a terrorist. CT's showing more presence towards mid this time. You see what it towards the sandbags and Blade. He'll be backing him up as well. They're not overcommitting to towards mid warehouse. They're actually just waiting in a little crossfire to play off each other. But Hellraiser is very patient right now, bleeding the CTs out. You can see they still have quite a lot of utility, the CTs. Actually, three smokes and incendiary and flashbangs as well. That's just a full array for Hellraiser. being very patient now. One minute, ten remains. And Bondic, he's working towards squeaky door. Just trying to... Show his hand. These are the, the crisscross smokes. I call them towards middle. Take that vision away from the CTs. And Molotovs will be dropped as well for anyone close range. The CTs are getting in, in front of these smokes. They're pushing in aggressively. And it's actually a little fake, you know? Oh, I think this is actually quite nice from flip side. They've actually called it will be an ace out of the attack. We're getting that information. Oh, Waylander, though. He likes to go for the nade. Blade tries to come back in and avenge his teammate. He's got the bomb in the open, but a wall now. Deployed of smoke toward the top of highway, and they'll grab that quickly and easily go back toward the site. The reset potential. Yep. I'd almost save right now. Uh, oh, that's the thing, right? It's you can't do anything either way. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you, you might as well try and win and see what you can do. It looks like you might want to save at this point, though. This smoked out, Molotov out, no nades, Famuses, and they do manage to get the first kill. Electronic at least makes this a bit more realistic. Is they're still winning flash at this point. Now they have to save. They're definitely not going to win the round. And uh, T's got so much money. Let's see zero on that near his. Both will pass as well. Does he dare go for the challenge? It's going to be getting one, and it's going to be just Markov left now. AK in hand, stuck towards heaven. I don't think it'd been detected at this point, so he probably will survive this. You know, it's actually quite a nice position considering. But the T's are coming around from T spawn as well. Yeah, it will survive, but you're absolutely right. The reset potential is a real big deal for them right now. So it's going to be a double eco for four of the players. Markov can see what he can try and do with the AK here. It might even be an idea to force into this, considering the double eco anyway. So yeah, I think they will. So Blade's got the body armor and the P250. They might as well try and win this round. It's getting a bit scary for them now. So try and see if Markov can do anything with the AWP, AWP, AK-47. We'll do that. We'll keep his money a little bit more modest. But this should be a guaranteed round for Hellraisers and it's for them to win the half as well. Four players towards B storage, walking into the warm embrace of the AK, it seems. Good AK. Oh, it doesn't work out. It was a good little face there, but Bondi takes him down. And Electronic now with the PP50 trying to do what he can and actually posting a pretty reasonable first kill there. And he goes down eventually, but four on three. Well, that has been tagged as well. That's round over. But can they find anything more out of this? Smoke off toward the tree, world that it will not be able to see. It'll be on to B, by which they approach four versus three. Waylander's going to take the Deagle back out toward middle. Vent's already broken out, so he can get himself in a position to potentially catch them off here. Dead Fox looms quite closely to the other side of that vent as they still try and get the information in the site. They just need to man up at this point. They know they're against pistols, but they're worried of the stack. Yeah, I guess it's making sure that they 
cover every sort of possibility here. But they didn't account for that one. The vent does come through. Luckily for them, though, Waylander is missing all the shots of the Desert Eagle, but that's not a miss. A headshot towards Angel does make things a little bit more interesting. Considering Dead Fox and Zero are low HP as well, this is probably not possible to win the round, but they can maybe take a few players down with them. As what well, it's coming in from the vents area as well. I'm pretty sure he can get two kills here. There's one. Player towards Toxic, if he takes a pot shot towards him, could actually take him down. He's uh, got a position on this. Blade's going to throw a couple uh, pop shots in the site to try and distract, but it's not enough. Wait, World Edit, though. Still with 23 HP and an AK. Has no armor and kit. Time's already gone. No winning the round at this point in time. Just trying to get guns gone. Taken away from the T's and Zero. He's going to try and run for the hills as he's only got 3 HP. He needs to get far back. He'll be far enough away as World Edit will go down. Well, they managed to get four kills there with the eco, but like I said, it was always going to be a double regardless. So 8-4 for Hellraisers. Any money they lost in the previous round, they're certainly going to recover here. It'll be a full eco from flip side. You can see even after the reinvestments, uh, Dead Fox, sorry, he still has $9,000. Bondok of eight, zero, just shy of 5,000. So like I said, after this round, they've, they've salvaged any money they lost in the previous. So just some PD-50s, Desert Eagles, four flip side. No real stack coming in either. This is the 2-1-2 two -two setup. Maybe it's aggressive towards A-Man, considering that you can see Waylander. Yep, he's just running that, going for the first shot, but Dead Fox, he's ready for him. Takes him down at this point. Our races don't have to do anything. They have the man advantage. That's what they're hunting for to start. And we'll see whether CTs can maybe find anything from this. And they have got any flashbangs. That's a problem. It's difficult to react with no utility. Actually, he's got a nice observer glitch going on. What's that? Well, the, the garage doors. Oh, so you see like a million of them? Yeah, I see. The, the little lines. Yeah. Here's the reset again. Yeah. yeah. World Edit. He's going to get pushed back inside of the site. They've already lost to Blade and Waylander. Have gone down. World Edit is going to fall as well. Markalov will at least pull back one, but he's not rolling back the years just yet, Henry. As Dead Fox will get him with the AWP. Nah, just kidding. That was yesterday, Henry. That was, that was your day. Roll, was it, we should have called it Rolling Back the Years. No, we called it Henry G Day. And didn't have the same ring to it. Could have been creative with the name. Okay, well, I didn't come up with it. It's Chad. Blame him. He is Stray, and you can't give him credit for everything. Zero's going to push through. Electronic will go down nine to four or so, looking increasingly like Hellraisers are firmly in control of this game as they go on another little three round spread, having lost only one in the last nine. Yeah, uh, since the gun round started, you have to remember that as well that uh, they did win the pistol as a force buy from Flipside. They got them back into this game. They had the 3 1 advantage, but since then, it's been a very one sided affair. And Hellraiser is controlling the economy very efficiently as well. Every round, Flipside have won, they get reset straight away. So 9 4 here. A chance to bring it back to 9-6. Still a very doable situation for them. As Molotovs this time thrown in towards Connector and Highway. It's normally smokes are used in those scenarios, but I uh, actually like this idea as well. It means you can save the smokes for a later situation for the post plant. We'll see whether this works out for them. Just one player towards it. That's Waylander. They are focusing towards middle this time. Flipside has been a problem for them in the past. Can World Edit find an initial shot here, but he's smoked out. That's the end of his run in that area. As Angel, he'll find the first kill. Blade is caught in a horrible situation there. The timings did not work in his favor. I like that smoke they're doing towards the top of the highway. That's very cool. They do it every single round. The CTs yep. have no vision as to whether they're coming up there or they're going towards B. It's actually a real nice but one of those smokes you throw every single round to allow this yeah, sort of thing nifty. to go down. It's, I think it's fairly easy to throw as well. Yeah. Well, electronic I one versus it. five. I think you do it from the boost spot. When you're boosted on uh, just before you come out, you throw it. I think you can do it there, but I think you can also do it from the pipes before you go into squeaky. Yeah. On the corner when you jump up. Uh, there's like a little, those little plumbing pipes, there's like an e-box there. I don't know what exactly It's just it is, really but. nice. You can see the CTs there. They, they want to fall back. They don't want to on the other side. And uh, someone's going to be waiting a squeaky for them to fall back. So they have to go up the ladder pretty much to save themselves. And they need to come in pre-fire in that position. It's pretty cool. Well, 10-4 Hellraiser's running away with this one in the first half. It's looking like it'll be 11-4. We have got four Famuses and Blades with the 5-7. No kits. One smoke, one incendiary. That's all they've got to work with. Aggressive, of course, trying to find that first pick, but as well, at it. Does decent damage to a sticker, takes him down to 2 HP, but still doesn't find the kill. As it looks like they'll be heading towards the A side of the map here. Waylander boosted up on the bomb site. This position is normally good, just finding that first initial frag. You can see players just as the smoke dissipates. You can see it on the top. It's normally heads you have to pop off, but when they execute as well, you can flash and jump on top of the bomb site to give yourself a fighting chance above the smoke. So that's when it's good, like that. Waylander's just waiting for them to approach. He sees all the Molotovs going out toward that quad position, but he just needs to get the vision of a player. He just needs to find a shot to take them down. Blade inside the smoke. He's going to wait for that same approach as Angel tries to wrap. It's Blade that actually gets aggressive and catches them off with the 5-7. Smartly, he'll pull back just slightly as well because he wants to lure them in toward his teammates, but Dead Fox 
Oh, we mentioned Waylander was looking for a shot. He's going to find him in turn. It's basically a three versus three plus two dead weights right now as World Edit sits on eight HP and Sticko on two. Yeah, and play just with the five seven as well. He's going to struggle here, but he does do some damage there with the first shot. Going to get down to 79 and just waiting to get that first pick just to give him a bit more of an opportune moment to get into the bomb site here. Can't fight it for now, but they will be committing as a middle way towards the A side. But there it is. Dead Fox with the Desert Eagle finishes off Blade. Zero gets a kill as well. And at this point, it looks like they will be finishing this one off. Dead Fox, another lovely shot from him. He finds three this round. It's up to Electronic. The scoreline will be 11 4 after the first half. And flip side, they only really find one gun round there. They, they force by the second and they get the 3 1. But after that, they looked. Pretty poor. Hellraisers, though, to be fair, a good approach. It seems like they've read uh, the flip side defense quite well. They're pushing middle every single time and using that one smoke we described before to actually lock out the vision. Lots of A splits and actually decent teamwork overall. So I'm happy with that from Hellraisers. Decent performance. Flip side, another bad day in the office, it seems. Yeah, really bad day. And we talked about World Edit needing to step up. CT side, AWP being something of. Uh, I almost want to call it a formality, something that yeah. just needs to be there no matter what on, on cash. And he was caught in a lot of bad positions. Absolutely. Well, 11-4 isn't the worst goal in the world. Maybe they can bounce back. We're going to take a quick break and you can come back and find out. Welcome back, everyone. We are ready to roll into our second half of our first game. Remember, best of ones double headers throughout the course of the season. I'm going to stop saying that. You should know that by now, but it's 11 4 for Hellraisers over Flipside. Indeed, Hellraisers ran away with that one pretty convincingly as well. They did win the pistol, but Flipside bounced back. You have to say now, Flipside probably need to pick this up to actually stand a chance here. Hellraisers is looking incredibly sharp right now. Flipside looking a bit poor, I have to say. Waylander, an interesting decision. Julie's in the pistol. I like Julie's. Let's this, do it. Is this the the right play? This is the the finish. I don't even speak Finnish. Julie's. <laughs> oh, those ones, the infamous ones. They are infamous, yeah. and uh, they actually just speak death, Henry, because that's what they wish upon everyone, and anyone standing in their way will be greeted with a warm hello from death. Right. Well, that's. Dark. See See, told you. Dead now, of course. Obviously, they don't speak very loud because <laughs> Angel wasn't listening. He's already dead. He's an angel. See, it works out still. We, we're still we're still in the room. 
Still in the room. While well, the Jewelies didn't post much, they go down straight away. It was a nice little boost there from the CTs. And looks like Flipside will be making their way towards the B site eventually. The bomb's still down towards the mid warehouse. They're just trying to get some map control at the moment. Electronic, he goes in first, just clearing out every little corner there. And he knows he's pushed the CTs back at this stage. So still time to play over here. And a smoke and a flashbang for the terrorists as well. Those are in the hands of Blade, of course. They pick up the Jewelies. World Edit decides he'll have a go with them. Yeah, World Edit thinks that uh, he can speak non finish finish. I mean, he's done lots of other crazy things. It makes him kind of, in some odd way, a raid boss because he's got duelies and armor. Yeah, I'd rather have a Tech Nine than duelies. Yeah, well, no one's no one here's get right or happy. Those are the duelie masters. Well, click, click. <laughs> the BB guns. Can you fire two guns like that in real life? Uh, I don't think with great accuracy, we could definitely do it. We definitely could, but it would be tough. Either way, world at it. He's going to be the one to hold off now. What is a bomb plant? Retake strategy was the ambition from Hellraisers. We'll see if they can make it work as well with the Molotov going out to World World, world oh, Edit. Gosh. Ooh, he's been tagged. He's down at, oh, sorry, take it back, down at 54. I was about to say 24. That's Dead Fox on the other side, who is now a Dead Fox. As the duelies do finally speak death. Oh, it's a follow-up assist onto Zero. I thought it was the kill as he drove by, but it's Electronic catching out on Sticko, and Bondic, he'll like to keep his kit and flash into the next round. Absolutely. Seems like it's quite a successful run there from Flipside. Didn't really have to give too much away. It was the duelies that went down to the start from the CT aggressive boost there. It was an equal exchange, but at that point, Flipside were calm. They didn't give too much away. Executed towards that A site, and although things got toasty towards the forklifts, it was the duelies that prevailed and towards the end. They actually did a lot of damage there, and they're going to keep them into the second round as well. So Hellraiser's I said, I was assuming they were going to force into this. They don't actually get any armor. So, okay, they've got a massive lead. This is good. This is what we like to see, Matthew. When you get the uh, bed of rounds like 11-4, you don't need to force into the second round. It's not required. A lot of people still don't seem to understand that, especially the fans on Twitter. But I have to explain it to I them mean, every do they, time. I mean, do they understand anything, Henry? Well, I just know. They just, like, whenever I made this comment, they're just like, they always message me saying, you don't understand why they're doing it. Well, yeah, I do understand. Uh, yeah, you friend. definitely there's do. Definitely, there's definitely options. And you I think, know, when they're in matchmaking and they just accidentally buy, they don't understand why they're doing it. But when you played, you know, CGS and a lot of high-level Counter-Strike, you knew, you understood. Yeah, there's obviously the option to force buy in a second. But if you if you have the huge bet of rounds, it just gives you a greater percentage chance of winning the game. Yes, you can still win the force buy in a second. But if you're talking, like, purely on like chance and what's going to have the greater outcome of working for you having the guns and all the grenades and defuse kit that's going to be a better chance of winning the game and not allowing them to uh, start breaking your economy it's, it's more risk versus reward in that sense but still this is why Hellraisers have taken the passive approach no one of any armor a defuse kit just in case they get lucky at the P250s you know, it's fine, but Angel does get down first. Quite a disciplined approach on flip side. Is clearing out every sort of sector towards the middle of the smoking connector as well. And it's going to be what I did, finding his second of the round. As it is up four versus three. Sticko has gone down to six HP as well. Grenades flying towards the B side. And there's going to be one player there for the CTs. That's zero. He hasn't been spotted for now. Still alive, but dead now. As it's going to be the four and two. And this round is over. A good approach from flip side. Maybe we do have a game on our hands after all. It's normally 12-3 that eludes us. But 11-4. Uh, I said yesterday, I certainly don't trust that number either. Well, I would, I would speculate we'll see a very similar round from Hellraiser's going into this one. Just a couple of upgraded pistols, nothing else needed. They're playing the long game here. They want to make sure they have all the money, money, baby. Money, money, baby. Best way to make money, just go full Jaden. <laughs> Well, that's what Flips I potentially will be doing next round. It's possible. It is definitely something that is in the cards. It's not really full, though. It's two or five. What do you? What would you define as a full Jaden? All five SMGs stay up. Really? Yep. What that if they had four? What if they had four SMGs and an then it's just a Jaden round, not a full Jaden uh, round. Okay. Waylander's gonna take down Stick. Go. He'll follow Ooh. it up. Bondic and Angel. That's money, money, baby. As Zero's gonna try and fire back with a P250 from afar. He'll take down Waylander. Dead Fox. He gets world edit. Things start to subside slightly from where they were. It was such a dominant opening up from that MAC-10, though, and Bomb's going to go back over toward B. There's no one there. There's no one residing inside of the site. So I such a quick default plan from Electronic. Electronic Supersonic. And it's now going to be them to hold off the site with AK. So Jaden potential gone. That's true. That is a shame. It is, it is a shame. That's why we're all here, really. That's why I'm here. Three on two, but... Uh... 
yeah, the CTs at this point, they can save a little UMP over. That's not the worst thing in the world, but ultimately, if he gets a kill with it, that'd be even better. He doesn't really want this weapon to next round. He'll probably take it if it comes to it, but ideally, if he finds a frag with this uh, SMG, he gets an extra 600 bucks. He's been very conservative with the cash already, and Dead Fox is the AWPer as well. So if he gets it, there it is, perfect. He doesn't even mind if he dies anymore. He wants to find another one. So his money next round will be absolutely fantastic. He's got 4,500 at the moment before the loss bonus comes in. So he goes to the next round with almost $7,000. This is why you don't buy on the second and third round, because you want to have all the money. You can get incendiaries now, kids. So your AWPer's going to be happy. He's not going to be glass cannon. There's certainly an argument for this sort of play. As we go into the first gun round here, it's round number four. AWP in the hands of Dead Fox, and it's a very similar story for Flipside as well. World Edit picking it up as well. This gun round important for both sides. If Flipside can get it, they may actually just get back into this game. If Hellraisers find it, it won't break the economy of Flipside for sure, but it will actually start their campaign here on the CT side. It's currently 3 0. World Edit is looking for anything that he can find with this AWP. We mentioned his lack of presence on the map on terms of the CT side. We'll see if he can get something rolling on the attack. Indeed, well, a full default for now from flip side. No one giving anything away. They're waiting for the full defense and seeing whether a CT does flash in. And you can see, actually, the CT set is very passive as well. Actually, three towards B. I think Sticko, he's towards the vents, what Dead Fox watches towards B storage. Yeah, he actually is. There he is. And Bondek, he's alone on the A site, which is fine. There's a lot of teams will play retake on that side of the map as they concentrate towards middle. Put some set smokes now towards the A site. This is this cure reaction from the CTs. I like that little smoke towards forklifts, giving them a path to that area, but what's the play from here? Thorndick is just gonna try and play from the fence. And lure them in, but it's mid. With most of the aggression right now from flip side. World that I could have his AWP set to the bottom of that white box and Angel looking to go aggressive. Yeah. Flash comes in, two in front, finds one, headshots available, bomb goes down. Does he know? Yes, now he will. It's not obstructed entirely by the box. That'll appear for him and Sticko's gonna pop out late, catch off electronic things falling apart for flip side. As Hellraiser's with an excellent hold and a late push in to get information, but also kills from Angel. As he gets Molotov out from the locker, that'll leave him in the clutches of World Edit on the AWP, but he's soon to be surrounded. In fact, three in front, Five one slow coming around, and exactly that. He's got to die now. He's going to die. Okay, that now he's got to stay alive. One second left. He's got a quick shot at his sticko. Somehow walked into three and stayed alive. If he pulls this, Ooh. I'm very impressed. Okay. And I'm also surprised Flipside don't get that kill. So I guess at his point at that point, he's like, okay, I'm probably going to die here. I'll just run in and die at A main. So I get the money into the next round. But that point, he found the no scope. He's like, okay, I've got a chance here. Got a smoke as well. Fell back. Actually lands the shots on the player rotating in. But still, I want to just pick up the round. But they're taking a lot of economic damage here. They were to lose this one. That's a real harsh reset. As it is 12 7, we have got the orb saved by World Edit. So, oh, unfortunately for him, though, he dies straight away. Dead Fox takes, gets the better of him in that situation. So, a 5 and 4 straight away after he did such good work to save that weapon over. It definitely does drop. And there is a player towards Toxic to maybe salvage the situation. He hasn't picked up the orb just yet. His way around trying to find something towards the A side. Damage done towards Bondic. Well, Bondic down to mark a lot of angels there to cover the cross. When they do try and go through, it's only one he'll find and immediately be pursued by a man who boosted himself onto the catwalk. All by his lonesome over top of the forklift. The bomb was late. I was down in the beast store, so yes, they have got control of the site, but the bomb's only just arriving now. It will be in the hands of Electronic. Throws a Molotov down to stop any ensuing CTs and pushing their way to the bomb site here, and the retake begins. Four versus three. A good position for the terrorists here. They've managed to buy some time and get themselves some good crossfires set up. Waylander, I feel like he's going to be the danger man here in this scenario as he sets himself up with the CTs using the smokes and the Molotovs right about now. Here it comes with the first smoke towards A-Main, and will they be able to step up as Blade fights the first kill? Oh, they're also blind as Electronic goes forward. He only finds one. Zero immediately grabs the AWP, turns it back, takes down Waylander, and guess what? Hellraiser's winning another round. They're on to 13 and to that of the seven of flip side. And I think my uh, baseless prediction, Henry, is looking more and more probable. I'm going to do that from now on. I think we'll it's the future of CS predictions. Oh, choose, choose a team, just go with it. That's the uh, future of predictions to be in fair, Counter Strike. The way CS is right now, it's the, might as well do that. Yeah, you literally might as well do that. I think the analyst desk is it's great for articulating points and certain, talking about the weaknesses and the strengths of certain teams and how they and play. The meta. But the, the predictions these days, unless it's a really one sided sort of battle, it could go anywhere. It's really difficult to actually work out who's going to win what and. Especially in online CS, that's the problem. Online is obviously a bit uh, easier 
to do the, the predictions. You should be able to kind of speculate who the better team is and what maps will work out in their favor and stuff. But online, it's been a, a very mixed bag of results and it's difficult to work out which way we'll go and who's going to turn up on the day. Yeah, the, the meme shouldn't be NACS, it should be online CS. Yeah, I agree. Well, 13-7 and Hellraisers, they should be closing this one out. It's still a little partial buy here from Flipside. There's definitely potential for them to win the round. They have been hitting some pretty nasty shots with the Deagles so far, but Angel, he gets the first kill. Waylander gets himself in a nice position. They're looking towards Highway. Trying to get the one D. This is the first shot and the second. Can't and actually land anything. Yeah. Did you want me to go all the way with that I one? I wanted to. Yeah, and the third. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I thought one and two is enough. Nah, you got to go full baseball. Three strikes, you're out. As effectively he was. 14-7. They've doubled the score now. A flip side. Plus minus really not having much of an effect for either of these teams as they won't be in contention for a spot in the land. But it is one of the factors for those of the teams on the bubble. The brink. Missed that video game, Brink. Never played it. I did it terribly, I, 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 I terribly a optimized. For Never played it. Yeah, terribly optimized, overly linear, but somehow really fun. Well then, Dead Fox, he's having fun. He gets the first all kill once again on towards World Edit. He's certainly uh, been the MVP in terms of the snipers for this first map. World Edit can't get anything going, it seems. He gets, he gets a couple of frags here and there, but they're so redundant. It's frags is not winning in the rounds, or he's just trying to survive. I can't really think of many scenarios. He's actually had impact frags that actually won the rounds. I actually can't think of one. Yep, I agree. I can't think of one either. But as we discussed yesterday on Drop the Bomb, that's because I just don't remember any of the rounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Flash is going to go out. They've already molotov off toward the vent. That'll clear mid. The only one spot left to check is behind the sandbags. And as we see it, they do not. It's completely vacant. Well, they have got the man disadvantage now. Blade taking a little bit of damage. They have 45 seconds remaining. And they do have utility, but only one smoke is a problem. They have got the Molotovs, which are extremely useful on cash. But uh, Hellraiser is still standing strong here with that man advantage. Just using a jump face there. Angel being set up. He was aggressive before, which worked out so nicely for him. It doesn't even look like you have to do that at this point. As you can hear the footsteps coming in towards him. He is not going to be taken down just yet, but he gets the first kill. Looking for the second. Ooh. It's Sticker that picks it up, but that should be round secure at this stage. But Waylander doing what he can. Electronic three versus one. He took down Sticko in his path for 20 seconds remaining and a bomb to recover. It's a Ooh. decent spray, but ultimately he had to be a one-tap to give him any chance to find the other frags. Well, that's going to put it onto map point for Hellraisers, who look to be in recovery mode so far in this season. If they win this, they'll be up to six and nine if they can close the series two straight. Seven and I guess what? They're actually... We're saying they're not really going to be in contention for land, but they're actually not far off it at that point in time. Who's that, sorry? Hell, well, I, mean, I still don't think they will be, but it puts them in the likes of Envious at 8-6, Fnatic 8-6, versus Pro 8-10, 99 Astralis. If they go to 7-9, and nine, I mean, they're in, they're in the cusp of it. They're saying that once you have 9, that's the cutoff point, right? Yeah, so I think it's true. So once you get to 9, you can still get there, but it's very unlikely. I think that's the cutoff point of 9 losses. Yeah, that's, yeah I think that's, uh, that's fairly accurate. Dead Fox. Smoked off in front, Molotov gonna go out toward headshots and not allow them to cross flash in, just find time. That's all he can hope to do in this situation as Bondic sprays through. Flipside finally with a bit of a lead in the round, but only by one man, and Markalov down to 31 HP. They've crossed that bomb over toward the site. It's Electronic once more that will go for the default plant. As that happens, his team sets up on the perimeter, including a late lurk coming in from the terrace. This is actually brilliant. Look right now at where Waylander is, because he's going to cut them all off before they even go for the retake. He gets one immediately. Waylander, no Dead way. Fox, though, snaps it back. He's got to find him. He knows he's up on heaven. Suddenly, this goes down to a one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be the lurk player against Dead Fox. Who's done it? What a play from Dead Fox. Well then, flip side with the pistols. I thought they had absolutely no chance of throwing that round. Three versus one, but dead box. He delivers. He had a fantastic game overall. He finishes that on what, like 25 frags, I think it was. He and is good. Angel was there, like a little him. bit above him, but still, what a crazy way to finish it. Desert Eagle. He had the open on his back. He doesn't need it. He just manages to land all the shots required with that eagle. I like this younger talent that we're finding. I say younger. I don't know how old dead fox is. Some of them are older in terms yeah. of actual age, but younger in this scene. Um, him and Barbar, Barbar Bar Bar now on Epsilon, came through the Pixel Fire roster. Epsilon themselves came through a miner system. There's proof that the miners are actually showing to be That's what uh, Fox played with him, right? Yeah, that's played what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, right. they, they, played, they played on Pixel Fire yeah. at the time, which then became Escape Gaming. That's right. Well then, um, I guess your prediction came right after all. How about to pick it up? Flip side been pretty horrible in this league so far, and another loss to add to the pile. It seems like Hellraiser, like you said, 
still in contention, I guess, with the land. He said they've hit the nine kind of losses. They win every single game from now. Maybe they have a chance. Who knows? Absolutely. Well, that said, we'll throw it back over to our lovely analysts, and I'm going to go use the bathroom. Too much information, Matt, but thank you very much for our first game done and dusted cash locked in, and it will be Hellraiser to pick it up. And you know what? I mean, it's their first win versus Flipside, but also it was very predictable for us here at the desk. It does just seem like this is there is a no end to Flipside's fall off of form. And what a way to end it as well, Mr. Dead Fox delivering, firing on all cylinders. The two, it was battle of the two new bloods, really, boys. But uh, what are you thinking, Yenko, just throughout that whole one? I think this was even more dominant than the score itself shows. I sure. mean, Flipside had a 3-1 lead in the first half, 3-0 lead in the second half. Basically, won just one real gun round, so Jesus. to speak, that ended up in a diffuse uh, in the first half on their CT side. So... A dominant performance by, by Hellraisers all around, really. Dominant to a point of almost uh, insanity. If you actually, yeah, you're right. If you do review it, it was that one buy round to actually put them on seven. Chad, I mean, how do you, how do you even start trying to diagnose Flipside's problems at this point? They have a lot of issues right now. Okay. And as Yanko touched in the pre-show, World Edit just tries to go for these flashy kills, you know? He finds himself out of position like almost every round with the ult. We saw one round, I don't know if he was meant to be getting flashed into, into A main because we didn't see the, the other perspective, yeah. but he was fully white jumped in there's three dudes who are also blind it comes out of it he manages to get one but then he's instantly traded at squeaky door we saw him mm -hmm. do the same thing he was waiting he got one then he was out of position again like he, he it's not like he was ready for a second player and that's also a bad call i mean in, in its core you don't want to send your opera there at that point in the round because if there's more than one guy then he can easily get traded you want to send a rifle there right. as we saw just in the replay what hellraisers did flashed in angel two guys fully flashed he has enough time to kill the first one and then just tap the other guy you know th that's the thing where even if he, world edit is not flashed it's really hard seeing him get a kill and then pull out mm. safely because there was a player in squeaky as well and it was yeah certainly putting his teammates out of position uh we I and mean, what's so crazy is he was actually top of the scoreboard as well you know those kills he was yeah. getting were adding up he's actually you know dro dropping 17 frags but this is not they don't tell the whole story that's for certain we always find ourselves saying that on desks I'm I mean, I, he's not, it's not his fault that they lost by no, any stretch no, no. of the imagination. The, the problem is that even early on, you could see there were rounds where Stiko got three kills with the Deagle that ended up in an eco that ended up in a 1v1. That's not a case of flip side like overextending. He just got three really crazy one digs. But that's where the problem starts because they lose the, the following gun round and then they force buy because Brother has enough for an op, but it's a really sketchy buy. They lose that round as well. Then they're ecoing and the the dex gun round they have famas says in yeah. order to have utility right that goes into a vicious circle just because they couldn't uh, have a, a clean anti eco round yeah and of course a big shout out does go out to the mvp of that game was mr angel 28 frags over 100 adr he had a spectacular performance on cash and looking forward to seeing if he can do something similar on our next what? 121 oh thank you what you said 180 no oh. I said over 100 i think i, ah, okay. I don't know uh, 121, not 180. That, <laughs> would, that's what I, uh, that <laughs> would be very <laughs> impressive. No, but our next map will be Nuke, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about that map. It's slowly, slowly slipping into the map pool after its introduction quite a while ago nowadays. But for now, we, we'll take a break. And a reminder, of course, about the Score Esports app, one of the many sponsors that makes this possible. It's available on your smartphone device, and it does enable you to keep track of all of the good bits surrounding your favorite esports, Dota, League of Legends, and your favorite CSGO. So you go get that on your phone. When we do come back, we'll be talking Nuke between Flipside and Hellraisers.